shin pop, oh, you dirty, dirty dog. <laughs> Just holy fuck. <laughs> Big Excel, he's faking the throw. Holy shit. What you've just witnessed is known as the triple feint, an underutilized technique that has developed as a result of competitive duels. If you're unaware, Chivalry 2 only allows the player to feint once before forcing them to commit to the feinted attack. This technique involves canceling the windup of an attack before initiating another attack and then feinting, giving off the impression of three separate attack animations. Thus the namesake, Triple Feint. Today, I've brought on a special guest, my fellow teammate on Mirage, Shinbop. Shinbop is who I believe to be the best player in the game who utilizes the triple feint and attack canceling in competitive play. So today, I'm going to allow him to explain his mindset and how he's adapted this playstyle. Shinbop, to the best of your ability, explain to me what a triple feint is and why it matters. So a triple feint is when you utilize the cancel ability to effectively feint three times instead of twice um and it's particularly uh, very useful for people who are um mid to low level even high level players who are used to really just uh, expecting two feints to come out and instead you're throwing them a curveball and, and doing a third attack right and like you said it's extremely powerful because of the fact that you can only counter faint once after countering exactly exactly so in order to counterplay this this canceling style effectively you have to be pretty patient um because if you're just going to be trying to mass their their feints then you're gonna get hit right typically if you were to just faint then a good player would be able to counter faint all of your attacks but because you're able to effectively faint through you know twice that means that you right. can with the triple faint then you can get through their defenses if they're not aware of what you're doing Exactly. And where this comes into play at, at higher levels too is it's kind of a leveling war, right? Where you can effectively faint as many times as you want or need to. You don't even just have to do it three times. You could you could faint as many times as you want with different attack styles, which can make it really confusing. I see. Okay. So can you go ahead more in depth onto when you should actually be using this and how you use it against noobs? Right. Uh, so um, against noobs, uh, it, it actually it uh, it depends on the level of player that you're playing against. But I'd, I'd say for the most general use cases, um, you want to really utilize this when you're in a neutral stance. And um, so when you're fighting in this game, there's initiative. And initiative is when one of the duelists that you're fighting has the first attack on you. So you're the one person's kind of in an aggressive state, and the other's in a defensive state. To obtain neutral is when the two duelists either get out of range or um, an event happens where no one party has the clear advantage over the other. And this can happen in either uh, jab clash scenarios or counter and run away scenarios. There's a whole plethora of scenarios that we could go over, but just to really um, get granular, it's, it's when you're in a neutral state because um, you cannot cancel when you're in a counter war. And that's really important to know. So if you're countering, you cannot uh, use the cancel button to faint more than twice. Right. We're trying to put them in neutral. Um, and that could basically be described as the state where neither has initiative. Correct. Okay. And so once you're in neutral, how would you go about actually tricking the duelist into uh, falling for your triple faint without so, hitting you past your triple faint? Right. So a lot of it comes with the threat of, of approaching them. So when you're a neutral and say you're a, uh, you want to be a certain distance away where no one person has a clear distance advantage, like say, for example, if someone's using a longer weapon, you might want to be a little bit farther, but the danger really comes from your approach to the other player because they'll see you, uh, winding up an attack right. and that's going to usually make them be patient and try and wait. But as soon as they see a second attack come out, they're going to try and cancel, uh, counter that. So that's when it's really threatening to come with the third attack, and it would look something like this. I see. Yeah. And the, yeah, and obviously I just go for a counter, so if I decide to go for a counter faint on the second one, then it would be too late and I wouldn't be able to counter a third time. Exactly. Understood. Right. And say, for example, you're a little bit more patient, it could it could look a little weird. So you can just, you could just uh, for example, just be waiting for me to... Right. To, and I'm waiting for you to bait out an attack the entire time. I'm baiting, I'm baiting out your counter. So as soon as on on my end, as soon as I'm seeing you counter, that's when I'm letting the strike go because I'm going to be faster. Let's go. 
Okay. So I get it. Yeah. Um, and it becomes more threatening the the more attack types that you that you put into the uh, to the cancel chain because it just looks weirder and it's harder to really determine when the attack's going to come out. Right, and ideally you should use your fastest attack at the end because you're trying to beat out their counter, right? Right. In a speed exactly. contest. Yeah, and if you don't, you can accidentally you can you can correctly bait their attack out, but you're gonna just get hit because even though you did everything right, you just having a slower attack. Makes sense. And I guess really the most important part of using cancels and dueling is to not overdo it. Because there are a ton of people who know how to cancel now in the game. Um, but I would say 95% of them overuse the canceling mechanic. Right. Um, because if you so just keep canceling, then they're either going to start swinging through your attacks with their counters. Right. Or they're because just going to wait. It goes into conditioning, right? Like um, it, uh, a lot of this game in dueling is... is being malleable and molding to your opponent's style and if you're really hard set on using this one like play style it's gonna be you know there's gonna be people who know how to can uh counter that and exploit you so you really want to just use it as like a tool in your toolbox rather than making it your entire play style and i know i say that as someone who uses it a lot but yeah you definitely want to only use it very sparingly and in, in, in uh these niche situations where you're in neutral um, of course so like for example if you come at me with a triple faint right now and i go to counter the first attack because i know that you're going for one i can easily just, just attack you yeah i yeah, could just exactly. accelerate my counter to hit you um or uh i could just wait patiently while holding block and it's almost as if holding block while waiting for you to finish your triple faint doesn't even use as much stamina as it costs to do the triple faint that's a very, very good point, and that's what a lot of people do at the high level, and it, and you will quickly get outstanned if somebody knows that these uh, cancels are coming. You will only get like two or three chances to even do it before you're you're outstanded. If they know, if they hold block and and are patient, then you can be messed up. Which actually brings me to another point. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. Is stamina retention and like um, stamina loss is is a huge factor with canceling because it does take up a fair amount of stamina especially if you're going for more than just three feints so knowing how to mitigate stamina loss is probably the biggest um necessary like factor with with even using this style in general